In Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad, the first tool on the left hand side is this hand. It's not called the hand tool, but if you tap on it, it's called the view tool. I don't know why it's called the view tool. Really, it should be called the hand tool. In Photoshop, it's called the hand tool, but it does the same thing as the hand tool. It simply just moves your way around the canvas. I'm using my Apple Pencil, but another easier way to use the view tool is by using two fingers and simply by putting two fingers or a finger and a thumb, you can move your way around the canvas that way. And that's my preferred way. If I'm in a different tool, like maybe the pen tool, I can still go around the canvas. I can also pinch in and pinch out to get into a bit more detail. And I can still move around the canvas. And that means I don't have to click on the view tool. Whatever tool I am in, two fingers will move your way around the canvas. That's the view tool or the hand tool, if you prefer to call it that, in Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad. In Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad, the second tool on the left hand side toolbar is the Move tool. If I simply tap on it, if we tap on the logo, you will see a blue line around it. And this Move tool means we can move this anywhere we want. Two fingers to undo. And another brilliant thing about the Move tool is if you actually select on a layer, so I'm just going to tap the text while we've got the Move tool selected, our text has now been selected. Again, two fingers to undo. And if I want that logo again, I can tap the logo and move it like that. But if I just go back to the text and simply tap on the logo. I can now move that logo. That's the move tool in Affinity Photo 2. It's really, really good for moving things, but it's also good for selecting different layers without having to go to the layer studio. In Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad, the third tool on the left hand side is the color picker, or if you're coming from a Photoshop background, it's the eyedropper tool. And when we have it selected, simply move your Apple Pencil anywhere in this photo. This photo is brilliant because there's lots of brilliant colors in it. And it gives you a bit of a preview and it zooms in and shows you what color you're selecting. And then if we click on the color studio, you can see that it's selected that pink color. When we'll click on it again while the color studio is open, if we want to choose maybe this orange color, and now that's changed and that's the color picker in Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad. In Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad, the third tool on the left hand side is the color picker. That's it picking one pixel. Sometimes it can be hard to get a one pixel color. If we tap the right hand side arrow here, now it is picking up a selection of three pixels. So it's actually going to choose the average of those three pixels. So it's going to zoom into those pixels and it's going to choose the average of those. And if you want a bigger area, five by five, there's an orange. You can see the circles getting bigger again. If we click 17 by 17 and if we click anywhere you can see it's going to pick up those colors and if we just tap on 65 by 65 129 by 129, 127, 157 by 157. Global, that means that it will choose any color from any layer. If we click next, current layer, that will only pick the color of the current layer. But if you've lots of different layers, it will only choose one layer. And that can also be very handy. And that's the color picker in Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad. In Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad, the fourth tool down on the left hand side is the crop tool. And the crop tool is used for cropping photos or for cropping pictures. Once you click into it, a white border appears with a grid and squares around the picture. And we can simply just tap on this with the Apple Pencil, bring it in, click the tick icon at the top toolbar. If we want to do something different, two fingers to undo that. We'll go back into the crop tool. On the left hand side here, these two toolbars appear and we can crop it in by using the sliders here going up and down. But I don't think it's as good as using your Apple Pencil to remove it and we'll just X out of that. We'll click into it again. There's other options up here, but the other one that I want to show you is just this one here, straighten. And now if we just tap on the horizon and click on it, that will straighten it in. And we'll pinch in a little bit more. We can then zoom in to our photo, click tick. Now it's straightened the horizon. We've cropped in. In Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad, the fifth tool down is the smart selection brush. As soon as we tap into it, this here slider appears and this slider controls the width of the smart selection brush. I want to make it something like that. Simply by dragging on this guy, you can see that I am selecting them and it's just taking
taken a few seconds to select them. That is looking pretty good. If we want to refine it a little bit more, click on the refined edge tool. Everything in the red is what's going to be masked out. But simply all I want to do is drag this toolbar over a little, click on selection. We can mask it, new layer, new layer with mask. And that's what I want to do by tapping on it and then clicking on the tick. You will see that the background's been removed and it's a really, really clean mask. The smart selection brush in Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad is so, so powerful. And that's the smart selection brush on Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad. I'm just jumping in here very quick to let you know about my ultimate lunch bundle. For a limited time only, it's 70% off. 70% off, two courses and one FX pack. What you're seeing on screen at the minute is my ultimate masterclass course, and that is everything, everything I know about Affinity Photo, I cram into this course. Together, we're gonna make a movie poster based on Star Wars, but don't worry if you don't like Star Wars, you'll learn so, so much from this course. The next course is combined and blend, and I'm gonna show you how to merge two photos together as if it's the same photo. There's a lot of tips, there's a lot of tricks, and the third thing in this bundle is what I call Sabre FX and its overlays for your photos. With 70% off, it's currently going for $89. If it wasn't for 70% off, it would be over $300. Even at $300, I think this is fantastic value. But please get it now if that interests you at 70% off. This offer will expire in the first week of January 2024. In Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad, the eighth tool down on the left hand side is the flood fill tool. In this example, I have a friendly bit of toast masked out. If I go to our layer studio, click on the plus icon, click on pixel layer, and if I maybe choose a color, this say a nice, maybe a nice light blue. If I have my flood tool selected, just double tap and it will make the whole layer blue. If we go back to our layer studio and we'll tap this background layer and we'll move it up to the very top. So you can see it's made our background blue. That's how you use the flood fill tool in Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad. In the Finley Photo 2 on the iPad, the seventh tool on the left hand side is the rectangular marquee tool. And simply with this tool, we can draw a rectangle, or if you hold down one finger, while drawing your rectangle, it turns into a square. Tap out to deselect it. On the left hand side, there's a slider, which means we can feather our selection too. So we can choose whatever we want in the slider or simply just tap into it and we'll maybe make it 10 pixels. Now, if we were to draw this rectangle and we'll simply go into the layer studio, go to plus, click on mask layer, you will see that the mask has now been feathered. Two fingers to undo and we'll zoom out using two fingers. We'll also tap into this tool and it gives you other options of a circle, a row, a column and freehand. And that's the rectangular or circular or row or column tool in Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad. In Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad, the sixth tool on the left hand side is called the Flood Selection Tool. And it's a bit like the magic wand in Photoshop. And when it's selected, you simply can just tap anywhere on the screen and you can see these here, as they call it, marching ants go all around the color you've selected. So I've tapped on the blue, I can tap on the yellow, and as you can see, it's selecting just that yellow. While you're in the Flood Selection Tool, there is a slider that appears on the left hand side and it's called the Tolerance Slider and why that's there is say if we want to focus on this here part say i want this red color currently if i click on it it's selecting all this red color if i move the tolerance down you can move it up you can move it down or you can type in a value in this case i think 10 percent should be okay now if i tap on it it's just selecting that red bit whereas before if i bring the tolerance up and if i click on that red bit i'll select all of it and that's the flood selection tool on affinity photo 2. On Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad, the ninth tool down on the left hand side is called the Fill Tool. And if you're coming from a Photoshop background, this is exactly the same as the Gradient Tool. So we can simply just click and drag with our Apple Pencil and you get a lovely gradient. If you want to change the colors of this gradient, simply just click on the black dot in this case, go up to the color studio on the right hand side and we can change this to a nice red color. If you want to change the white, simply just tap on the white and again in the color studio, we can change that to a nice yellow color. You can also move the size of the gradient just by tapping this line and bringing it up further to the red or down further towards the yellow. And that's the fill tool in Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad. In Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad, the 10th tool down on the left hand side is the paintbrush tool. And it does what you expect it to do. It simply just gives you the ability to draw 
on your artwork and that's really realistic looking waves there. On the left hand side when you click into the paintbrush tool there's a few sliders that appear and each has a different job. In this case we can bring the, the size up and that's going to be way too big. Two fingers to undo or we can bring it quite small down and again that's looking really good there. If there's a dot here, you can you can click a dot and you'll see that it has other options. This is the flow, this is the hardness. By bringing the hardness down, when we bring the hardness down this up a wee bit, you'll see it softens the brush. Tons of options and that's the paint brush in Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad. In Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad, if you want to use the pixel brush, you have to come down to the 10th tool on the left hand side here and you will see there's a small arrow in the corner of this tool. That means if you tap it again, it gives you more options. If we simply click the pixel brush and this brush gives you the ability to do pixel art. So you can simply just tap and start doing pixels anywhere on your artwork. On the left hand side it gives you lots of different options of sliders to control this brush. The bottom one's the most important one here because this is the size. We can go down quite small and do quite tiny pixels or if you want you can come up and make them quite bigger. And that's the pixel brush in Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad. In Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad, if you want to use the Paint Mixer Brush, you'll have to come down to the 10th tool on the left hand side here. You'll tap into the Paint Brush tool. You'll also see there's a small arrow on this tool, which means if you tap it again, it gives you more options. In this case, we want to choose the Paint Mixer Brush. Just tap on it. And for a design like this, this is a lot of fun. We'll choose this orangey yellow color. Look at that. I can just mix all these colors together and if we stop say here on the pinky bit and mix this pink in now if i go somewhere else it'll have that pink color and anywhere we go it's going to pick up the last location that you used so now it's going to be purple if you want to clean your brush use this icon here simply tap it it's a clean brush and you'll see it's collecting that white and now we can go again and on the left hand side here there's lots of different options you can change and that's the paint mixer brush in affinity photo 2 on the ipad on affinity photo 2 on the ipad if you want to choose the color replacement brush simply come down to the 10th tool on the left hand side it's the paint brush but as you can see there's a small arrow here which means there's other tools behind this so if we tap into that tool we can click on the color replacement brush simply tap on it and now if i want to change this lemon color to something different click into the color studio we'll maybe make it a nice pinky color if i now tap somewhere you will see that a lot of this yellow is now being changed. If we tap on this slider, you will see the tolerance is set at 10%. If we maybe bring it up to about 40% or 39% and now tap on this, you will see it selects all of this yellow. It's still missing a few bits. You'll have to zoom in and go a little bit closer to get these. But that's the color replacement brush in Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad. On Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad, the 11th tool down is the Erase Brush. And in this case, this is a bit of line art drawn. If I zoom into this guy's face or this robot's face, and I'm not too happy with his face, I can change the settings of my brush on the left hand side. You'll see these toolbars appear. The bottom one's quite important because it's the size, size of the brush. And I can just simply erase out his eyes. I can also erase out his nose and mouth if I want to, but two fingers to undo. It's really just the eyes I want to erase out and then if I want I can go into the paintbrush and maybe draw other eyes and if I'm not happy with that I can click on the erase brush again and erase out these eyes and I go again and the erase brush can be used for photos and images. It does what it says in the tin. It just simply erases your artwork or photos and that's the erase brush in Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad. On Affinity Photo 2 on the iPad the 11th tool on the left hand side is called the erase brush but as you can see there's a small arrow in the bottom corner if we tap that it gives you another option you can now do background erase and that means you can erase backgrounds of subjects there's sliders on the left hand side that appear the first important slider is this width of the brush and if we get it to decent width maybe something like that and if we tap on the background you can see it's doing it's taking away the background but it's also taking away some of our fro fox friend here so two fingers done do. If we tap on this slider, you can see the tolerance is set to 10%. So if we bring it down a little bit more and then tap here, if we bring up the tolerance quite high to maybe 34%, it's also picking up 
some of his ears and if we move into here it will pick up some of the blue there's better ways to erase backgrounds in my opinion but it does have its uses and that's the erase background brush in affinity photo 2 on the ipad in affinity photo 2 on the ipad there's a button that i use all the time and it's really really handy and it's this button in the top right hand corner if we just tap it it simply removes all the toolbars the left right and top toolbars tap it again just to bring them back why would i or why would you want to use this button sometimes when you're working on a piece of art or a design sometimes it's nice just to take a step back look at it clean without any toolbars and that's where that button comes in handy it clears the app from all its toolbars and you can just focus on the artwork and it's really really handy and it does make a difference i use it all the time tap on it again just to bring the toolbars back and that's how to remove toolbars in affinity photo 2 on the ipad if you are new to affinity photo 2 on the ipad if you're coming from a photoshop background sometimes it's hard to know what all the toolbars do and that's where this button in the bottom right hand corner comes in really really handy it's a button with a question mark on it if you simply tap and hold it it will then show you the names of all the tools here on the left hand side in affinity photo all the tools on the right hand side are called studios and it'll show you all the names of what the different studios are called the information here in the middle that's for the top toolbar if you simply just let go of the button everything's removed again tap it and hold to bring it back if you are just starting to learn affinity photo 2 in the ipad this button is really really handy just to quickly tap it if you're not sure what the different tools do and especially what the studios are called and what studio to use that's a handy button in affinity photo 2 on the ipad